الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. نكتفي إن شاء الله تعالى والرسالة التبوكية وابن القيم رحمه الله. And إن شاء الله very important principle he mentions that it's really one of the treasures. These benefits of knowledge are treasures. Treasures that means it's a life changing. Uh, matters of knowledge that requires struggle and effort and that's one of the major differences between physical actions and non-physical actions. The physical actions we have to have the knowledge of it and it's easy to be done because it's walk, stand, make ruku, make sujood. Physically it's easy and if someone is not able to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. Someone is not able to stand in salah, he sits, and so on. The deeds done by the heart, it's easy to understand, hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, but it requires more effort than the physical actions. More effort, more struggle, because we're dealing with one's nafs, with one's being. So it's more struggle and more effort, but at the same time, no excuse. Why? Because we all have the same hearts. No one has a stronger heart than a weaker heart. No one can say, I cannot be truthful. It's too difficult. You can say, I'm not able to stand in the salah, so I sit down. That's fine. You get the full reward. But some, can someone says, I'm not able to be truthful, I have to lie. There's no excuse. Can someone says, I cannot deal with these matters, deeds done by the heart, because it's difficult and I don't want to struggle with, them, with my own self. No physical struggle is required here. It's all inward, inward struggle. So that's why there's no excuse in missing it. And at the same time, it requires lots of struggle. But it's feasible because we have these abilities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all the same ability to overcome the diseases and the deficiencies within our own nafs. So uh, having said that, once we get one of these treasures and to benefit from it, we should have, uh, inshallah ta'ala, to make sure that we never forget it by practicing it. And to prepare oneself that it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to require to be patient with oneself. And it, the other side also have to be patient with their own selves and with their brothers. So it it's, uh, it's go, goes both ways as uh, we would see inshallah ta'ala. So after what has been mentioned about al-birr wa taqwa and the differences between both, uh, one thing that with the ayah that in Surah Al-Ma'idah that we're going through is wa ta'awanu al-birr wa taqwa wa la ta'awanu al-ithmi wal-udwan wa taqullah which means help one another in matters of righteousness and taqwa and do not help one another in matters of sins and transgression. So he mentioned here that once people are together, and this is at all times, we didn't uh, yet talk about the, the treasure. It's going to come later, inshallah. Once people are together, and make this as a rule, any group of people, they get together, whether it's in a masjid, in a workplace, at home. Once people are together, then there is a, a duty to be done, which is at ta'awun al birri wa taqwa that they have to help one another upon matters of righteousness and taqwa. This is a must. So this is always there once people are together. Many people, they don't think this way. If they go to a gathering, uh, they consider themselves individuals in it. No, you're not. You are with this gathering with a duty, coming with a duty that you have to make sure that you help one another in matters of righteousness and taqwa. If you see that they're not upon this, then take yourself out. Then leave. Or... You might be of a great uh, person for them, and that is to invite them, to call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to do the acts that would be uh, obligatory upon you, one of which is enjoining good, forbidding evil. And if they don't uh, respect that or they don't acknowledge that, then a person has to uh, relieve himself and remove himself from places where people are gathered in matters of sins and transgression and so on. But it's a concept that should never escape from our hearts. 
And therefore, for example, the best of gatherings when people are together in the masjid, in the salah, in matters of ibadah. So each one is with that perspective that where is the work of a ta'awun? Because people cannot do things on their own. As, as mentioned before, salatul jama'ah is not by one person. So it has to have jama'ah. So they're helping one another to establish the great rewards of praying jama'ah. So your brother that is coming to the masjid, he's doing you a favor by making the jama'ah bigger so that the reward is more. That brother that is coming to the masjid, when the imam says, waladdalin, and he says, ameen, he increases the number of people who are saying ameen. If the dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from one person, the rest of them, they get the acceptance also. And that's the barakah of the jama'ah. So the favor of others upon ourselves is, is a great favor. And this is part of a ta'awun that a person sees himself, which is something related to that principle, inshallah ta'ala, that we should be upon. So he mentions that, that this is one of the maqasad, this is the objective every time people are together. That's why there is extensive talk about the issues of people being together. And what do they do together? And different ahkam that has to be related to this subject.